The story begins in the early years of World War II, when engineers, chemists and field carpenters were fighting a second battle most civilians never hear about. Ammunition shortages were tightening, steel was being rationed, and countries involved in the war needed ways to harden the most basic materials they had left, especially wood. Barracks, crates, tool handles, ammunition boxes, fuel storage racks, and field structures all relied on timber. But untreated timber was weak. It rotted fast, splintered easily, soaked up moisture like a sponge, and provided almost zero defense against shrapnel. The military needed a way to give ordinary wood the toughness of composite armor without using metals they could not spare. That's where a forgotten additive came in, an unassuming substance mixed directly into paint that could turn raw lumber into a hardened, water-resistant, fungus-resistant, shrapnel-resistant material that soldiers swore felt like hitting metal. This opening should give you a sense of why this topic matters today. The same additive that helped protect field structures from moisture, mold, insects and impact damage can still be used by anyone working with backyard sheds, survival cabins, homestead fencing, raised beds or outdoor furniture. You aren't just learning a fact from the war. You're learning a practical method that still outperforms some commercial wood preservatives. And the best part is that the chemical is still available, still cheap, and still incredibly effective. The substance was borax. Not the cleaning powder most people keep under their sink today, but an industrial-strength sodium borate mixture dissolved and stabilized into wartime paints. Quartermasters needed something easy to transport, easy to apply, and instantly compatible with the oil-based paints used on crates and structures. When dissolved, sodium borate penetrated through the paint layer and bonded within the wood fibers, forming a barrier that repelled water, stopped bacteria and fungi from colonizing the surface, and hardened the cellulose structure so it could resist impacts that would normally destroy untreated timber. Soldiers reported that painted boxes treated with borat didn't swell during monsoon seasons, didn't crack in freezing weather, and didn't get eaten by insects even when buried halfway in mud. For the military, this was priceless because it meant supply crates lasted longer, tools didn't soften in the handle, and makeshift field shelters held up far better than before. The additive worked by chemically altering the wood's internal environment. Sodium borate raises the wood's alkalinity, disrupting rot-causing fungi before they can even take hold. It also crystallizes inside the fibers, making it far harder for insects like beetles and termites to chew into. The hardening effect wasn't myth. Borat solutions strengthen the lignin network inside timber, increasing resistance to splintering. During the war, engineers couldn't afford full metal shielding on everything, but they found that crates painted with borat-enhanced coatings could withstand minor shrapnel, ricocheting fragments, and rough handling far better than untreated wood. This is why many historians refer to these crates as bulletproof even though they weren't armor. They were simply tough enough to survive impacts that would shred a normal board. The practical modern use is, well, pretty simple, and anyone working with outdoor wood can apply it. Borate penetrates best when mixed into water-based carriers, but it still bonds well inside oil-based paints if dissolved first. If someone wanted to recreate the World War II method exactly, they'd dissolve powdered borax or boric acid in boiling water until it's fully clear, then thin an oil-based primer with a small measured amount of that solution. The goal isn't to create a thick paste, 
but a stabilized mixture that sinks deep into the wood grain before the paint dries. The military standard was roughly one part sodium barat solution to ten parts paint, strong enough to preserve, but not so strong it destabilized the binder. For modern woodworkers, this translates to adding a cup of fully dissolved borax solution to a quart of primer stirring it thoroughly and applying it directly to raw, unfinished wood. Once it dries, a top coat seals it in place. The result is lumber that shrugs off rot and insects for decades. Anyone maintaining sheds or fences can benefit from this. A homeowner could treat the bottom ends of fence posts before putting them in the ground, giving them a rot-proof base similar to wartime trench supports. A survivalist building a small cabin could coat the structural beams with a borate-enhanced primer to stop moisture from wicking upward during rainy months. A gardener constructing raised beds could apply two coats on the inside surfaces, preventing soil moisture from rotting the boards. Even tool handles last far longer with this treatment because the additive prevents softening and microbial decay. This is why many old wartime shovels, axes and crates survived long after the conflict ended. They were preserved chemically, not just physically. The wartime advantage also included dimensional stability. Untreated wood expands and contracts constantly with moisture changes, which weakens joinery and leads to cracking. Barat-treated wood absorbs far less water, allowing structures to hold their shape longer. A modern example would be a backyard shed door that usually warps every rainy season. Applying a borate mix before painting locks moisture out and keeps the panels from deforming. It is a direct application of a Second World War field technique that still solves real problems today. There is a deeper historical lesson here. Wartime innovation didn't just create weapons. It created durable, low-tech solutions that everyday people can still use. The borate paint additive wasn't glamorous, but it kept equipment functional, protected supply lines, and reduced the constant need for replacement materials. And in a world where lumber prices rise and weather patterns shift unpredictably, that same approach remains valuable. You don't need advanced sealants or expensive preservatives. You need a simple mineral powder, hot water, and a can of paint. If you want more forgotten wartime engineering that still applies today, from heating tricks to improvised building methods, make sure you subscribe to In the Beginning and share this guide with other history enthusiasts. There's a lot more hidden knowledge worth bringing back.